In this video, I'd like to look at Grandy's series. Grandy's series is a divergent series with an interesting history, and it illustrates the risks of treating infinite sums like finite sums. Here is Grandy's series. And Grandy's series um, was kind of central in a little mathematical controversy. There was a great question for a time about whether Grandy's series converges and if it does converge, what it converges to. And you might ask, how could there be a controversy about that? Just find the partial sums and take their limits. But what was going on was that mathematicians were using and working with infinite series long before there was any kind of agreed upon definition of what it means for an infinite series to converge. Our current limit definition of convergence wasn't stated until some time in the 19th century. Grandy published a book on this series in 1703. So people were looking at this series for more than a century before there was any concrete definition of convergence or divergence. And the reason this series gave mathematicians so much trouble is at the time mathematicians were treating infinite sums as if they were finite sums. And you can sometimes get away with that, but sometimes you can't. And Grandy's series is a beautiful example of when you cannot get away with treating infinite series like finite sums. In particular, if you have a finite sum, addition is associative. You can put parentheses into a finite sum and it doesn't change anything. With this infinite series, well, let's put in some parentheses. We put in parentheses strategically and all of these terms cancel, they turn to zero. And this sum is zero. So Grandy's series seems like it should equal zero, except let's now put parentheses in somewhere else. Oops, putting parentheses in in different places turns this sum into one. So 
obviously something is going wrong here. A sum cannot equal both zero and one. And looking back at this, we would say that what's going wrong is that we're treating infinite sums like finite sums. Just because finite addition is associative and we can put parentheses in doesn't mean that infinite addition has that property. So there was a great well, a relatively great, I suppose. At least there was a dispute over what this sum should equal. A lot of people thought it should equal one half. And I mean, very prominent mathematicians, Leibniz, one of the co-inventors of calculus thought this should be one half. Euler, unquestionably one of the greatest mathematicians to ever live, thought it should be one half. Um, but our modern definition of a limit will make it clear that this series doesn't have a sum. It diverges. Before I do that, uh, maybe a little interesting historical note. Grandy was a priest as well as a mathematician, and he imbued this series with religious significance. To him, the idea that we can take something that is equal to nothing and make it equal to something just by putting in parentheses was direct the analysis to God's creation of the earth ex nihilo. That is the creation of the earth from nothing. So the fact that mere humans could do this was certainly evidence that God could create the earth from nothing. Whether you find that argument convincing, I will leave to individual students to determine on their own. I will simply give these partial sums. What we find is that these partial sums alternate between one and zero. This sequence is not approaching any number. So the limit of the partial sums does not exist. The sum of the series is the limit of the partial sums. So if this, if these partial sums don't have a limit, this series diverges.